Today we're going to take a look at the 2023 Honda Metropolitan, also known as the Giorno in other corners of the world. We'll talk about where this 49cc scooter fits in Honda's current model lineup and we'll dive into its specs and features, what changed for this year and a lot more as we go over everything you need to know about Honda's second cheapest automatic scooter. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video, sharing, and throwing a comment below really helps with growing this channel through YouTube's algorithm, which in return helps me create more videos for you guys, and I really appreciate the help. So first up, where does a Metropolitan fit in Honda's rather lackluster scooter model lineup for the USA? Let's quickly run through them. We'll start with the cheapest option, and that's the new for this year, Navi 110, that comes in at only $1,807. Then we move up to the Metro that we're looking at today and it bumps you up to $25.99 which is followed up by the Ruckus which shares the same engine size but there are a few differences between them that we'll dive more into later and it bumps you up to $28.99. The next step up is where we have the PCX160 where you have the option between standard brakes or ABS and it starts at $38.99. And last but not least we have the ADV150 that comes in at $42.99 but it's fixing to turn into the ADV160 and if you'd like to see a sneak peek of those new changes and learn more about them click up here. And speaking of learning, if you'd like to learn more about any of those models I just mentioned or others in Honda's scooter and motorcycle lineup, check out some of my past videos. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into some more info on the Metropolitan. Now, do you have any options when buying the Metro in 2023? Unlike some models with different braking and transmission options, the only options you have with this bike come down to color choices. And for this year, you have this matte armored green metallic that we're looking at today, and this blue that's just called blue metallic here in the States. But Canada adds a nice touch by adding atmosphere in its name. And speaking of other countries, do you like our lighter accents on this screen, or do you like what Japan did for theirs this year with a darker theme? Now let's get into the chassis and suspension. Unlike the Ruckus with its two-piece aluminum frame, the Metropolitan has this one-piece steel chassis. Thankfully, when Honda swapped out the aluminum setup that the Metro used to have, they made a few tweaks here and there to keep the overall weight gain down to only three pounds back then, making its current curb weight come in at 179 pounds, 15 pounds lighter than the Ruckus. For suspension up front, you have a very basic and non-adjustable 26mm fork that brings in 2.72 inches of travel compared to the Ruckus at 1.93 inches. Then out back, you have a single-sided swing arm with a single shock mounted on the left side that brings in a little less travel than the Ruckus, coming in at 2.36 inches with no adjustability here either. Helping the suspension do its thing are a set of 10-inch wheels front and rear with a set of matching 80 by 100 tires on both corners. Which leads us to another one of the many upsides to these small bikes. You can snatch up a set of tires for less than 100 bucks. Then when it comes to slowing those wheels down, we're headed back to the last century for a set of drum brakes with a 95mm setup in the front, and out back you've got a larger 110mm mechanical drum brake. And the Metro also has Honda CBS, a combined braking system for an added level of safety. So if you grab a handful of rear brake, it will throw some front brake in there automatically to try and help keep you from locking up the rear tire and in return, stopping quicker. To finish up on the chassis side of things, we'll hit on a few numbers and first being at seat height. If you're a little on the vertically challenged side and need every bit of help you can get to touch the ground, the Metropolitan has the lowest seat height out of Honda scooters coming in at only 28.3 inches. 0.6 inches lower than the Ruckus. However, it does lose 1.6 inches of ground clearance over the Ruckus, but most people aren't bringing out their inner hooligan by curb hopping on a Metro like the Ruckus. So ground clearance isn't usually that big of a deal on these bikes. Next up, let's get into the engine and drivetrain. The Metropolitan has a 49cc single cylinder engine similar to the Ruckus, but there's one thing that really sets them apart from each other. The Metro is fuel injected instead of carbureted like the Ruckus and Navi. It makes right at 4.4 horsepower, 8,000 RPMs, and 3 pound feet of torque at 6,000 RPM. So, yeah, you're not going to win many drag races on it, but it's enough to send an average sized person on a Metropolitan to a top speed of right around the 35 to 40 mile per hour mark. And if you're lightweight or find a strong enough backwind down a hill, you might be able to wring your neck for a bit more. Plus, if you'd like a bit more oomph, you've got the aftermarket world out there making performance modifications for these, so you can pick up an extra 0.1 horsepower or 1 mile an hour on your top speed. 
So how about the transmission? Since this is a scooter, it's utilizing Honda's V-Matic CVT setup, which means it's a fully automatic. And unlike with Honda's DCT automatic transmissions, where you have neutral and drive to select or different drive modes, with the Metro, this is all you have to do. It's super easy. All you gotta do is pull the brake, hit the start button, she fires up, and we are good to go. It doesn't get any easier than that. On the fuel economy side of things, American Honda doesn't advertise its rating anymore, but when they did, it was 117 miles per gallon. If we pair that rating up with its 1.2 gallon fuel tank and do a little math, that puts your range right around the 130-ish mile mark before you're pushing it. Now, when it comes to maintaining this engine, per usual, there's not a lot to it with every 4,000 miles for your oil change, and for comparison's sake, the ruckus is every 2,500 miles. And one thing to note, if you bring your scooter into the dealer and have them do exactly as the maintenance schedule says, the Metro has recommended valve inspections every 4,000 miles as well, whereas the Ruckus is every 15,000 miles. It's not a huge deal, but something to keep in mind. Now let's bounce around the bike and touch on a few different things. Storage is a pretty important topic for most scooter riders, and thankfully, the Metropolitan doesn't disappoint. You've got 22 liters of weather-resistant storage under the seat that's kept secure via a lock through the ignition system. So all you have to do is enter your key, turn it, and hit this button to unlatch the seat. You also have this little open cubby hole and a glove box, so to say, for another place to throw your stuff and keep it out of the elements. Plus, you have this hook here so you can secure a bag or something along those lines for the trip. And how about accessories? Well, American Honda doesn't offer much with a rear trunk and luggage rack, or rear carrier as they call it, being your only options, but if you don't mind a little more legwork, Honda does make more accessories for these overseas, and you also have some aftermarket options as well, and I'll have some of them linked below for you guys to check out. When it comes to rider controls and electronics, it's pretty basic and that's a bonus for a lot of people. On the right side, you have your throttle and front brake lever with the left lever for your rear brakes, and this smaller lever here is for your park and brake in the back. For gauges, you've got a larger display that's easier to read at a glance when compared to the Ruckus, and it gives you a lot more information too, with one of the nicest parts being an actual fuel gauge, instead of just relying on a low fuel light once it hits the reserve. Now, let's start her up and show you what she sounds like, and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the 2023 Honda Metropolitan. So what did Honda change for this year? The only changes for 2023 come in the way of colors and pricing. They swapped out the pearl soft beige and coastal blue color options from last year with what we've covered earlier and its price went up 100 bucks. Which leads me to a couple of questions for you guys. What do you think Honda should change on the Metropolitan to bring it to the next level while still being able to keep its price tag below $3,000? I remember selling these when their MSRP was $1,800 and just like the Ruckus, we're really creeping up on that $3,000 mark, but at least the Metro went through a few rounds of updates. Granted, some of them were mistakes, but then Honda went back and fixed them, so no harm, no foul. But that's an entirely different video on its own as I don't want to get too sidetracked. I think this little guy would sell pretty well with a larger engine option as a lot of people love the styling but they need more performance at the end of the day. If they threw the new 4-valve 160 engine in there, this little thing would fly and if they could keep it around the 3500 mark or less, I think it'd sell pretty well. But what do you guys think about it all? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments section and I'll be joining in on the conversation too. Thanks again for watching and supporting all of this. I really appreciate it guys and we'll see you in the next one. But first, 